What's up YouTube? Today we're gonna have a look at this sound. So as you can hear, it's a simple squelchy sound that is being modulated in the left and right channel. If you're familiar with Vidal, you might recognize the effect when setting the LFOs to stereo. Um, I believe I just achieved the kind of the same approach. Uh, so if we have a look at the patch right here, you can see that I use two simple saw waves, uh, some distortion, and I send them to separate lanes, which moves everything to lane three in case I'm not having it this in this particular patch, but in case I want to process a whole signal, um, like a master chain, um, like a master bus for the effects or something. I don't know how to describe it. Uh, so let's uh, try and recreate this patch from scratch. So I prepared another face plant here, which is an init patch. So for the generator, I want to choose a analog. Um, then I want a distortion to give it some beef or beef, as we say in Swedish. Maybe up the drive a little bit. And I'm going to call this one left gonna copy it by holding control and then left click. I'm gonna call this one right. And then I want to send, this one is fine, send it to lane one, which is he over here. Then we wanna send this one to lane two, which is gonna be our right channel. And over here, we wanna send it to lane three. And this one is already set to lane three in case we wanna have some master effects. And in order to split this, since we can't pan that over here, we need to insert a uh, snap-in called stereo. I want to hard pan it left, hard pan it right. And we're gonna, we want to control this. So if I move it, all the way, it's gonna be straight up in the middle. And we're gonna do the opposite over here. So we're gonna go minus 50%. Something like this. And I feel my OCD is kicking in. So I'm gonna do this on macro two actually. Sorry about that. Or I could just right click, hit minus 50. So, let's call this, I don't know, stereo mono, maybe? Because we're in the middle right here. And let's see what we got so far. If we mute this. So yeah, I think you get the point. Just gonna rename this. And to get our squelch sound, we are gonna need a filter. Where's the filter snap in? There it is. Gonna copy it, move it over here, change it to band pass. Up the queue a little bit, maybe do a times two filter slope. 
and I want to copy that value, insert it here, so I get the same. And I want them to move towards together, so I'm going to do the same principle over here. Can move this one up a little bit more. And I'm going to use macro 1 for our filter cutoff. So let's move this guy maybe up 50% as well. This one goes back 50% as well. So we get something like this. We've got two filters moving against each other. So yeah, we're getting there. And maybe I want to have a saturator. I don't want it to have it. This is a matter of taste, actually. Um, let's hear how it sounds if I have it before the filter. And this is how it sounds if I have it after the filter. I prefer having it before the filter. Sounds pretty cool. So what's happening here is when we turn our knob over here, on the right channel, it's emphasizing the high frequencies. And when we're uh, and when it's all the way down on 0%, it's emphasizing, emphasizing the low frequencies on our lane 1 or on the left channel. So if we move it, it's going to switch. So the right channel will be emphasizing the low frequencies and the opposite for uh, the left channel. Um, and then this one pans it. Since it's running in parallel over here, this one is... Um, having everything in the middle, but still going to do like the opposite. So it's going to alternate uh, between the values, if that makes any sense. <laughs> but at the same time, it's right up in the middle. But to uh, actually have the actual squelchy type of sound, we're going to need an LFO. And there's actually two options here. What we can do is Let's move this one over here, maybe. Let's plus point four, maybe. So as you can tell, since I move in the opposite way, it's going to like alternate between, it's going to be different in the right and the left channel. Um, however, notice that I used the actual like one LFO to do the modulation. Um, it can be pretty cool to have another LFO and maybe set another rate for one of the channels. So let's use this LFO modulating the same amount but at a slower rate. And to give it even more stereo movement, 
what we can do is we can assign another macro that will um, activate an LFO which will pan both them left and right so it gets so it doesn't because when we when we're using this one as is the right channel is always going to be to the right and the left channel is always going to be to the um, and the left channel is always going to be to the left and the right channel is always going to be to the right um, but if I take the third LFO over here maybe do something like this maybe let's see so that one goes something like this okay and if we turn this up let's go unipolar But I only want this to be active when I have it on stereo. So when it's on mono, like this, I don't want it to pan at all. Um, so what I can do is I can, when this one is at 100% in mono, this one will turn off our macro. So that means if it's to make it optional because sometimes you don't want it to move around like this. Maybe you want it to have a static to spread it out in the stereo space manually and find the sweet spot. So, yeah, and maybe for a master fix, just to prove a point, we could use a compressor. To squash the signal a little bit. And after we could put a slice EQ maybe. Maybe we want a flanger. So yeah, um, pretty cool effect if you ask me. So yeah, that was all. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs>